Good Wednesday morning. I cannot believe that it's episode 40 and it's the 20th of May already. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Miss Kivley, if you don't know, and we will continue. We are going to start chapter 16 today, the Oompa Loompas. Oh boy, Oompa Loompas, everyone said it once. Oompa Loompas? Imported direct from Loompa Land, said Mr. Wonka proudly. There's no such place, said Mrs. Salt. Excuse me, dear lady, but Mr. Wonka, cried Mrs. Salt. I am a teacher of geography. Well, then you know all about it, said Mr. Wonka. And oh, what a terrible country it is. Nothing but thick jungles infested with the most dangerous beasts in all the world. Hornswogglers and snozwangers and those terrible wicked wing doodles. A wing doodle would eat 10 Oompa Loompas just for breakfast and come galloping back for a second helping. When I went out there, I found out the little Oompa Loompas living in tree houses. They had to live in tree houses just to escape from the wang doodles and the horn swagglers and the snoz wangers. And they were practically starving to death. They were living on green caterpillars and the caterpillars tasted revolting. And the Oompa Loompas spent every moment of their days climbing through the treetops looking for other things to mash up with the caterpillars to make them taste a little better. Red beetles, for instance, and eucalyptus leaves and the bark of the bong bong tree. All of them beastly, but not so quite as beastly as the caterpillars. Poor little Oompa Loompas. The one food they longed for more than anything, uh, anything else was the cocoa bean. But they couldn't get it. And Oompa Loompa was lucky if they found three or four beans in a year, but oh, how they craved them. They used to dream about the cocoa bean all night and talk about them all day. You had only to mention the word cocoa to an Oompa Loompa and he would start dribbling at the mouth. The cocoa bean, hmm. Mr. Wonka continued, which grows on the cocoa tree, with the cacao tree, excuse me, which happens to be the thing from which all chocolate is made. You cannot make chocolate without the, the cacao tree. The bean is chocolate. I myself use billions of cocoa beans every week in this factory. And so, my dear children, as soon as I discovered that the Oompa Loompas were crazy for this particular food, I climbed up to their treehouse village and poked my head in through the door of the treehouse, belonging to the leader of their tribe. Oh, the poor little fellow, looking thin and starved, was sitting there trying to eat a bowl full of matched up green caterpillars without being sick. Look here, I said, speaking not English, of course, but Oompa Loompa-ish. Look here, if you and all your people will come back to my country and live in my factory, I'll give you all the chocolate you want. I've got mountains and mountains of it in my storehouses. You can have cocoa beans for breakfast and every meal. You can gorge yourselves on them. I'll even pay your wages in the cocoa beans if you want. You really mean it? Asked the Oompa Loompa's leader, leaping up from his chair. So here he is going to the tree house. Oompa Loompa, or Mr. Wonka has the top hat. Of course I mean it, I said. And you can have chocolate all day long. Chocolate tastes even better than cocoa beans because it's got milk and sugar added. The little man gave a great whoop joy and threw his bowl of mashed caterpillars right out the treehouse window. It's a deal, he cried. Come on, let's go. So I shipped them all over here, every man, woman, and child in the Oompa Loompa tribe. It was easy. I smuggled them over in large packing cases with holes in them, and they all got here safely. They are wonderful workers, and they all speak English now. They love dancing and music. They're always making up songs. I expect you will hear a good deal of singing today. <clears throat> Sorry, from time to time. I must warn you, though, that there are rather, they are rather mischievous. They tell jokes. They still wear the same kind of clothes they wore in the jungle. They insist upon that. The men, as you can see for yourselves across the river, wear only deerskins, and the women wear leaves, and the children wear nothing at all. The women use fresh leaves every day. Daddy, shouted Veruca Salt, the girl who got everything she wanted. Daddy, I want an Oompa Loompa. I want you to get me an Oompa Loompa. I want an Oompa Loompa right away. I want to take it home with me, Daddy. Go on, Daddy, get me an Oompa Loompa. <sighs> Now my pet, said her father, we mustn't interrupt Mr. Wonka, but I want a Noompa Loompa, she screamed. All right, Veruca, all right, but I can't get one for this second. Please be patient. I'll see that you get one before the day is out. Augustus, shouted Mrs. Galoop. Augustus, sweetheart, I don't think you'd better do that. Augustus Galoop, as you might have guessed, had quietly sneaked down to the edge of the river. He was now kneeling on the riverbank, scooping up hot melted chocolate into his mouth as fast as he could. Hmm. If you've seen the movie, you know what's coming up, but I love how it's written here. Chapter 17, Augustus Gloop goes up the pipe. 
When Mr. Wonka turned around and saw what Augustus was doing, he cried out, Oh, no, please, Augustus, please, I beg you not to do that. My chocolate must be untouched by human hands. Augustus, called out Mrs. Gloop, didn't you hear that the man said, Come away from that river at once. Oh, this stuff is terrific, said Augustus. Not the slightest notice of his mother or Mr. Wonka. Oh, boy, I need a bucket to drink it properly. Augustus, cried Mr. Wonka, hopping up and down and wagging his stick in the air. You must come away. You're dirtying my chocolate. Augustus, cried Mrs. Gloop. Augustus. But Augustus was deaf to everything except the call of his enormous stomach. He was now lying full length on the ground with his head far out over the river, lapping it up like a dog. Augustus. And Mrs. Gloop shouted, you'll be getting that nasty cold of yours to a million people all over the country. That makes me ugh, every time. Be careful, Augustus, shouted Mr. Gloop. You're leading out too far. Mr. Gloop was absolutely right, for suddenly there was a shriek, ee, then a splash, whoosh, and into the river went Augustus Gloop. And in one second, he had disappeared under the brown surface. Save him, screamed Mrs. Galoop, going white in the face and waving her umbrella about. He'll drown. He can't swim a yard. Save him, save him. Good heavens, said Mr. Galoop. I'm not diving in there. I've got my best suit on. Augustus Galoop's face came up again to the surface, painted brown with chocolate. Help, 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 he cried. Fish me out. Don't just stand there, Mrs. Galoop screamed at Mr. Galoop. Do something. I am doing something, said Mr. Galoop who was now taking off his jacket and getting ready to dive in the chocolate. But while he was doing this, the wretched boy was being sucked closer and closer to the mouth of the, one of the great pipes that was dangling down to the river. Then all at once, a powerful suction <laughs> took hold of him completely and he was pulled under the surface and then into the mouth of the pipe. The crowd on the riverbank waited breathlessly to see where he would come out. There he goes, someone shouted pointing upwards, and sure enough, because the pipe was made of glass, Augustus Galoop could be clearly seen shooting up inside, head first, like a torpedo. Help, murder, please, said Mrs. Galoop. Augustus, come back at once. What are you doing? Where are you going? It's a wonder to me, said Mr. Galoop, how that pipe is big enough for him to go through. It isn't big enough, said Charlie Bucket. Oh, dear, look, he's slowing down. So he is, said Grandpa Joe. He's gonna stick, said Charlie. By golly, he has stuck, said Charlie again. It's his stomach that's done it, Mr. Galoop said. He blocked the whole pipe, said Grandpa Joe. Smash the pipe, yelled Mrs. Galoop, still waving her umbrella. Augustus, come out here at once. The watchers below could see the chocolate swishing around the boy in the pipe, and they could see the buildup behind him, a solid mass pushing against the blockage. The pressure was terrific. Something had to give. And something did give. And that something was Augustus. <sighs> Up he shot like a bullet in a barrel of a gun. He disappeared, yelled Mrs. Galoop. Where does that pipe go to? Quick, call the fire brigade. <gasps> Keep calm, cried Mr. Wonka. Keep calm, my dear lady. Keep calm. There is no danger, no danger whatsoever. Augustus had gone on a little journey, that's all. A most interesting little journey. But he'll come out just fine. You wait and see. How can he possibly come out just fine, snapped Mrs. Gloop. He'll be made into marshmallows in five seconds. Oh, impossible, cried Mr. Wonka. Unthinkable, inconceivable, absurd. He could never make it into marshmallows. And why not, may I ask, shouted Mrs. Gloop. Because that pipe doesn't go to the marshmallow room, Mr. Wonka answered. It doesn't go anywhere near that. That pipe, the one Augustus went up, happens to lead directly to the room where he makes the most delicious kind of chocolate, or excuse me, strawberry flavored chocolate coated fudge. Then it'll be made into strawberry flavored chocolate coated fudge, screamed Mrs. Galoop. My poor Augustus, they'll be selling it by the pound all over the country tomorrow morning. You're quite right, said Mr. Galoop. I know I'm right, said Mrs. Galoop. It's beyond a joke. Mr. Wonka doesn't seem to think so, cried Mrs. Galoop. Just look at him, he's laughing his head off. How dare you laugh? When my boy's just gone up the pipe, you monster, she shrieked, pointing her umbrella at Mr. Wonka. You think this is a joke, don't you? You think that sucking my boy up into your fudge room like that is just one great big colossal joke? He'll be perfectly safe, said Mr. Wonka, giggling slightly. He'll be chocolate fudge, screamed Mrs. Gloop. Never, cried Mr. Wonka. Of course he will, cried Mrs. Gloop. I wouldn't allow it, said Mr. Wonka. And why not, cried, shrieked Mrs. Gloop. Because he would taste horrible. 
Mr. Wonka, said Mr. Wonka. Just imagine, Augustus flavored chocolate coated gloop. Blech. No one would buy it. They most certainly would, cried Mr. Gloop indignantly. I don't want to think about it, shrieked Mrs. Gloop. Nor do I, said Mr. Wonka. And I promise you, madame, that your darling boy is perfectly safe. If he is perfectly safe, then where is he? Snapped Mrs. Gloop. Lead him to me at this instant. Mr. Wonka turned around and clicked his fingers sharply. Three times. Immediately an Oompa Loompa appeared as if from nowhere and stood beside him. The Oompa Loompa bowed and smiled, showing beautiful white teeth. His skin was a rosy white and long ugh, golden brown hair. And the top of his head came just above the height of Mr. He came just above the height of Mr. Wonka's knee. He wore unusual deerskin slung over his shoulder. Now listen to me, said Mr. Wonka, looking down at the tiny pan man. I want you to take Mr. and Mrs. Gloop up to the fudge room and help them to find their son, Augustus. He's just gone up the pipe. The Oompa Loompa took one look at Mrs. Gloop and exploded into peals of laughter. Oh, do be quiet, Mr. Wonka said. Control yourself, pull yourself together. Mrs. Gloop does not think this is funny at all. You can say that again, said Mrs. Gloop. Go straight to the fudge room, Mr. Wonka said to the Oompa Loompa. And when you get there, take a long stick and start poking inside the big chocolate mixing barrel. I'm almost certain they'll find him in there. But you better look sharp and you'll have to hurry. If you leave him in the chocolate mixing barrel too long, he's liable to get poured in the fudge boiler and that would really be a disaster now, wouldn't it? My fudge would become quite unedible. Mrs. Galoop let out a shriek of fury. I'm joking, Mr. Wonka said, giggling madly behind his beard. I didn't mean it, forgive me, oh, I'm so sorry. Goodbye, Mrs. Galoop and Mr. Galoop. Goodbye, goodbye, I'll see you later. And Mr. and Mrs. Galoop and their tiny escort hurried away. The five Oompa Loompas on the far side of the river suddenly began hopping and dancing about and beating wildly upon a number of very small drums. Augustus Galoop, they chatted. Augustus Galoop. Grandpa, cried Charlie. Listen to them, Grandpa. What are they doing? Shh, whispered Grandpa Joe. I think they're going to sing us a song. Augustus Galoop, chatted the Oompa Loompas. Augustus Galoop, the great big greedy nincompoop. How long could we allow this beast to gorge and guzzle, feed and feast on everything he wanted to? Great Scott, it simply wouldn't do. However long this pig might live, we're positive he'd never give even the smallest bit of fun or happiness to anyone. So what do we do in cases as such as this? We use a gentle touch and carefully we take the brat and turn him into something that will give us all, or give us great pleasure to us all, a doll, for instance, or a ball, or marbles or a rocking horse, but this revolting boy, of course, was so utter, un, ugh, so utterly vile, so greedy, so foul, so infantile, he left a most disgusting taste inside our mouths, and so in haste, we chose a thing that, come what may, would take the nasty taste away. Come on, we cried, the time is ripe to send him shooting up the pipe. He has to go, it has to be, and very soon he's going to see inside the room which he is gone. Some funny things are going on. But don't your children be alarmed. Augustus Gloop will not be harmed, although of course we must admit he will be altered quite a bit. He'll be quite changed from what he's been. And when he goes to the fudge machine, slowly the wheels go round and round. The cogs begin to grind and pound. The hundred knives to slice, 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 and add some sugar, cream, and spice. We boil him for a minute more until we're absolutely sure that all the greed and all the gall is boiled away once and for all. Then he comes out and by now, by grace, a miracle has taken place. This boy who was only just before was loathed by men from shore to shore. This greedy brute, this louse's ear is loved by people everywhere. For who could hate or bear a grudge against a lus luscious bit of fudge? I told you they love singing, cried Mr. Wonka. Aren't they delightful? Aren't they charming? But you mustn't believe a word they said. It's all nonsense, every bit of it. Are the Oompa Loompas really joking, Grandpa? asked Charlie. Of course they're joking, answered Grandpa, Grandpa Joe. They must be joking. At least, I hope they're joking. Don't you? And that is the end of chapter 13. Perfect timing. Anyway, hang in there. Thanks for tuning in. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Can't believe it's already going to be Thursday. Take care and we love you. Be safe. Bye.